and welcome to my really big shoe. Er, er, uh, uh, show. Hey Rick, thanks for having me on your show. It's a pleasure to be here today. I first discovered your music in 2017 when I wrote a review of your fantastic album, Flow Motion. At that point, I didn't realize you had been releasing music since 2008, including your 2020 recording lineage. You have released a total of seven studio albums. Yes, I've released seven studio albums. The first was back in 2008, entitled Synesthesia, and uh, the most recent was this past year, an album I put out called Lineage. Uh, consider all the albums to be photographs, if you will, of where I was at that point in time. And uh, I enjoy the process a lot, and I hope to continue releasing albums, hopefully one per year, uh, as an ongoing process. It's a lot of fun, and I like playing with different musicians and putting the bands together, coming up with the concept and the arrangements, so hopefully more albums to come. Give me a little background on your early beginnings in music. So uh, I started uh, playing trombone at the age of 12. Before that I played a little piano, but not, not much. I, I just loved music as a kid. My father played a lot of oldies and rock and jazz from the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s at home. So I, I heard a lot of that growing up and I was just in love with music. So when they came to the school to do a presentation of the instruments, uh, in fourth grade, I just picked the trombone. I don't know, there was something I liked about the slide, and I had heard Tommy Dorsey albums from my father, and I just really liked the, the warm tone. It sounded like a human voice to me, so I picked it. And I uh, didn't take it seriously for a few years, but uh, once I got to high school, I realized that it was something I was good at, and uh, started taking it more seriously, and ended up getting a scholarship to go to the Berklee School of Music by the time I graduated high school. Boy, that album, Flow Motion, it's, it's a unique statement in modern jazz. Okay, okay, I read that on your website. But truly, that album has depth, intimacy, and smooth soul. Well, thanks a lot. I'm glad you liked the record. I had a lot of fun making that album, Flow Motion. It was the first album that I did live in the studio, meaning... I put all the musicians in one room together and recorded as if we were in a club on a gig as opposed to a lot of times when you record an album everybody's in separate isolation booths with headphones on to get a cleaner sound but I wanted uh, it to be more like a live live album if you will everybody playing together I think it leads to a more natural energized performance because the musicians are feeding off each other together in the same room and uh, also it was easier to videotape it and uh, put out the videos that way so it was a great it was a great time uh, I reunited with two of my favorite saxophonists Dana Stevens and Patrick Cornelius who I've known for many many years and uh, everybody played great and it was a lot of fun in researching you for this project I learned that you earned scholarships to attend several prestigious music schools including the Thelonious Monk Institute. Tell us about your music education. By the way, I love Thelonious Monk. Yes, so I received a scholarship to attend the Berklee College of Music after high school and ended up spending four years there in Boston. Studied with many great teachers including Hal Crook and Phil Wilson on trombone, Greg Hopkins on trumpet, many more. 
and met many, many great players that I still play with today. The scene in Boston at Berkeley and NEC, in other schools, it was just, it was amazing. And I learned so much in those four years. And upon graduating, I received a scholarship to go to the Manhattan School of Music for a master's degree. So it's always been my dream to come to New York and I finally got to do it. So I moved, I moved out and spent two years at the Manhattan School learning and playing with many other great teachers and players. And just being in New York City was inspiring and exciting. It was great, great two years of my life. And at the end, I auditioned for the Thelonious Monk Institute of Jazz, which was based in Los Angeles. And I auditioned for that in front of several of my idols. It was Herbie Hancock, Wayne Shorter, and Terrence Blanchard, who all are involved in the Institute, or were at that time. Uh, it was just a thrill of my life, and probably the most nervous I've ever been to walk into a room and audition for those, those <laughs> idols of mine. So it was really exciting and luckily I was chosen and it was a great, great two years. I got to be part of a band. They, they select a small group of musicians to play together as a band for two years and it's an invaluable experience because it's, it's being like on a team, you know, a basketball team. You get to develop a chemistry, you're playing with each other five days a week and you learn how to feed off each other and react off each other learn a lot about each other even on a personal level so it was a great time many great musicians in that band such as Lionel Loeke on guitar uh, Gretchen Parlato on voice, Dana Stevens uh, on saxophone, Massimo Bilcati on bass a lot, a lot of uh, great players in that band and very exciting time for me and worked with a lot more jazz masters who came in and worked with us such as Dave Holland, John Schofield, Steve Touré uh, Mark Turner so it was a great time and uh, kind of the, the final part of my music education, which I considered an invaluable time in my life. I see you've appeared on a few albums by Michael Buble, Crazy Love, Nobody But Me, and a few others. How did the, Mi how did the Michael Buble connection materialize? So I first met Michael uh, when I was finishing at the Floney Monk Institute. Uh, I received a phone call that there was going to be an audition to put together a, a band to support Michael on some uh, showcases he was doing in Los Angeles for his new record on Warner Brothers. So me and some of my other friends um, went to the audition and uh, ended up getting in the band. And uh, here I am almost 20 years later. <laughs> It's been an amazing journey. Uh, we started playing some clubs and we did a short tour in the States and it just kept growing and growing. You know, we went from clubs to theaters to arenas. And it's just been an amazing journey. Uh, the guy is a, just a super talented vocalist and amazing entertainer. And uh, I love that he's just loyal and he wanted to keep the same core group together all these years and I've been very lucky to be part of that. And uh, it's like, it's like a, a family, a touring family, you know, and we, we have so much fun and we've been all around the world and uh, I hope it keeps going, you know, it's, it's been almost 20 years now, so I've been very lucky I showed up for that audition that day. You are most regarded a trombonist. Ah, your trombone work. And for that matter, trumpet is remarkably smooth and soulful. I consider you to be one of the finest brass musicians of the past 20 years. Well, thank you for that compliment. I don't know about that, but I try my best and take what I do seriously. And uh, hopefully some people like it. And I really appreciate that. A few years back, I tried blowing on a trumpet and I couldn't get any sound out of it. Not a bit. How do you do it? Tell me about your technique. Well, playing a brass instrument takes one thing in particular, and that is a lot of repetition. You have to do it every day. You got to keep your lip, your lips are a muscle and they're not used to blowing into a piece of metal. So you have to do that daily. And that's the key to success is just repetition, practice. You got to go to the gym, if you will, and do your weightlifting every day to stay in shape. Because if you don't, couple days later you'll be out of shape. It goes fast, so I guess my technique is a lot of diligent practice. 
let's discuss your current release lineage. Now before we get into the music, I want to mention this one comes right on the heels of your 2019 album, Time Remembered. Actually, this is your fourth album since 2017. You've been keeping busy lately. What drives you to keep on recording? I've really been into recording, especially lately, because uh, I consider it a good outlet for myself to put out music that uh, is, is mine or something that I've always wanted to do. And I'm not getting any younger, and I feel like the more I can do now, the better. I, I won't regret it, and I want to have something to look back on when I'm older. So that's what's driving me at the moment to keep recording. Generally, you compose and write all your songs, but with Lineage, you took a completely different route. You decided to do an album of standards. I've always wanted to do a standards record of songs that I that weren't mine and that were just arranged and up until now mostly I've done original music so finally decided to try and tackle that uh, I think it takes a lot of maturity to make a, an album of standards because these songs have been recorded so many times and so many classic versions so you have to uh, feel confident that you can bring something to the table that is your own and I thought I was ready to do that so uh, that's that's why I chose to do a standards album at this point what I find most interesting about this album is that you're not only doing the standards, but you are making them your own. Your signature sound is written all over these songs. The smooth groove of the trombone and trumpet, the jazz-tinged drums, the cool bass, superb piano, and that soulful hint of quiet storm hiding underneath it all. Well, thanks. I'm glad that you felt that way. I thought that uh, it came out well, and uh, I wanted to put my sound all over the record, obviously. The trombone is my main instrument, and I think it's a beautiful sounding instrument, and I wanted to highlight that on this record, just playing standards and trying to sing the, sing the melodies and almost think like a vocalist would. I've learned from Michael Bublé a lot about how to sing through a, through a horn and just just not trying to overdo it, you know. The melodies speak for themselves. They're timeless melodies, so I wanted to feature the melodies and, and the trombone playing on this album. I didn't want to change the songs too much. I wanted to keep them intact as they originally were intended to be. You know, and, I, and just, I thought little arrangements, just Making little things here and there will make it a little more personal. Like on Smile, I gave it a little kind of poppy groove with the brushes and piano intro. And on uh, I'm Getting Sentimental Over You, did a little key change and gave it a more uh, uh, medium swing up tempo uh, from the original, which is a ballad. So little things like that can uh, make it a little more personal. And just getting a great band together, a great swinging band of some of my favorite musicians and friends. Those were the keys to making the record. What technique did you use to record this album? Or maybe I should ask, was the album recorded live in studio? Yes, uh, this album, like my previous several, was recorded all live in the studio in one room. I set up a home studio in my uh, apartment in New York City a few years ago. And it's, uh, it's not big, but it's it's, it's great because we're all in one room and the room sounds nice and we're playing together just like we're playing a gig as I mentioned earlier so that's how this album was recorded and uh, that's the way I want to record all my albums I think from now on this this type of album like an acoustic project just everybody playing together because when you separate into different rooms it's I think you lose a little bit of the feeling and also just musician just instruments recorded together in one room produces a certain sound that that's how albums used to be recorded back in the 50s and 40s and uh, you know I think it sounds great I think these instruments are meant to be played together and recorded together you get that bleed they call it when different mics are picking up all the instruments and I think it's a great sound I really like the live in studio videos you made for the album what made you do this 
I wanted to uh, have a video component for all these records because it seems like now with YouTube and Instagram and Facebook, a video plays an important part in how people listen to music. So I thought that it would be uh, it would be good to have the video components because if you're not if you don't hear the record on Apple Music or Spotify, at least maybe you'll see some a clip on YouTube or that'll lead you to check out the record. So I, that's why I, I have the videos for these albums. My favorite track from the album is your rendition of Sonny Stitz's The Eternal Triangle which was made famous by Dizzy Gillespie in 1957. That trombone duet between you and Elliot Mason is amazing. Just, just amazing. You guys really get to swinging and steaming. But it's your own trombone solo that tears the roof off the house. What were you thinking as you played that solo? Uh, yeah, that track was a lot of fun to make. I've always wanted to do something with Elliot and came up with that arrangement and he came in that day and just crushed it. Uh, that was the last tune recorded, we recorded of the two-day session, so I was a bit tired. So I guess I was thinking, just to try to play a good solo and get through this before you completely run, completely run out of gas. But uh, it worked out and uh, I'm really happy that it came, came out the way it did. How was it working with Elliot Mason? Uh, working with Elliot was great. I've known him for a long time. I heard him back uh, when he was a student at Berkeley and I was in high school and was just blown away. He's always been an inspiring musician to me and a uh, super, super nice guy. Him and his brother Brad are both great guys, amazing players. So it was great working with him. He just came in, was super pro and nice and, uh, you know, we got it done. Great. It came out great. Another standout track is Charlie Chaplin's Smile. A whole lot of people have recorded that song, but you really made it special. What made you decide to record this song? I've always loved the song Smile. I just love the melody and the, and the lyrics. So uh, it was something I've been wanting to record for a long time. I know it's been recorded countless times by many, many great artists and there are many timeless versions. So this is a little intimidating, but <laughs> you can't back down. So. We came up with an arrangement and uh, recorded it. I thought it came out nice. <laughs> Caravan is one of my favorite jazz standards, a song co-written by Duke Ellington dating back to 1936, which, by the way, is the year my mom was born. Your rendition of the song, while largely sticks to the classic arrangement, you added your own character with a bouncy horn opening and a sort of modern cosmopolitan feel at around six minutes. Uh, yeah, Caravan. So for this record, I wanted to record a few, mostly it's jazz standards from the American Songbook, and then I wanted to pick three of my favorite jazz composers that were also jazz musicians and composers. And uh, Duke Ellington is the king of them all, if you ask me, and most people would agree. And Thelonious Monk, another legend, and Wayne Shorter. So I picked two Duke Ellington songs, one Thelonious Monk song, and uh, one by Wayne Shorter. Or those are three of my all-time favorites. Uh, so Caravan, obviously Duke Ellington classic. Uh, I did a little bit of a time modulation in there to uh, to mix it up and uh, create a little energy. And uh, I wanted to record a song with a plunger. I have never done that. So I, I featured the uh, trombone plunger on that. Okay, Nick, 
Let's have a little bit of fun here. So this is my signature question. And it really doesn't have anything to do with anything. Uh, you know, you know, you know, just pure silliness. This is it. If you could be a member of any television sitcom family, which would it be? Television sitcom family. Hmm. Well, I guess I would say The Simpsons. I know that's a cartoon, but I hope it counts because uh, that show's been around since I was just a kid and it's still going and I love it. So I will say The Simpsons. And maybe I could play trombone and Marge can play baritone and we can have a musical family. <laughs> well, Nick, I want to extend my gratitude to you for spending this time with me. This has been a true honor for me. I am a huge fan of your music and consider you to be one of the greatest jazz musicians of the past 20 years. Thank you, Nick, and I wish you all the best in all your future efforts. Thank you again. Rick, thanks again for having me on your show. I really appreciate it, and thanks for asking such great and thoughtful questions. It's been a pleasure to, to answer them for you, and uh, good luck with everything. Once again, thanks for having me.